Okay, so I've got my pants rolled up because we're going to be talking about feet in this video. Your foot posture and your foot mechanics are so crucial because that's the only thing connecting to the, you to the floor when you're performing most of your gym lifts. Um, especially squatting, deadlifting, lunging, these are all great leg day exercises. And if we don't have good foot posture and foot mechanics in the foot, it's going to cause problems in the ankle, in the knee, in the hip. All that stuff is connected to your spine. It can cause problems in your lower back, mid back, upper back. It can cause problems in your neck and shoulders. So we really have to address foot mechanics and foot posture. So let's go over the structure of the foot really quick here. We've got the heel. We've got the ball of the foot right here. We've got the big toe and we've got the outside parameter of the foot. And for this video, those are the big players. So we're gonna talk about that structure and how to organize the foot properly when performing any exercise. Even if you're doing a standing bicep curl, I want your feet in a good position. When you're ordering your drink at Starbucks, I want your feet in a good position. I want them organized and activated. All right, so what I want you to do is stand with your feet straight forward and for some of you, straight forward might feel pigeon toe. That's all right, you're just used to standing like this with your knees caved in. So as soon as you turn your toes in, you're really caved in. We'll get there. Point your second toe, this is your second toe. Point your second toe straight forward and my stance is about hip width right now. By the way, you should be doing this with your shoes and socks off so you can feel and see your feet. If you're doing it with your shoes on, I like to say it's like trying to put a CD in a disc player with mitts on. Like you're just, you don't have control of your hand when you have mitts on or you have less control. So with a shoe on, that kind of deadens your foot. You just have a big thing on the end of your ankle. We want to take the shoes off, we want to take any restricting tool off and get your foot muscles active and get them doing the work, all right? Okay, so back to business with the foot mechanics and foot posture. Second toe pointing straight forward. Here I want you to grip the floor. Grip the floor with your heel. Ball the foot, big toe, and outside parameter of the foot. When you grip the floor, you shouldn't scrunch up your foot. Your toes should not be scrunching up. They should be gripping without scrunching, all right? That scrunch move is actually a great exercise to strengthen the bottom of the foot, but we're not gonna go there right now. We're just talking about gripping the floor. Okay, so we've got the second toe pointed straight forward and we're gripping the floor through the heel, the ball of the foot, the big toe, and the outside parameter without the toes scrunching up. Next, we need to add torque to the ankle, knee, and hip system. Okay, we talked about torque through the shoulder, elbow, and wrist. We've also got to apply torque through the hip joint the knee joint and the ankle. What's nice about applying torque through that system, not only does it strengthen and make that system more stable, but it also creates a natural arch in your foot. When you untorque your ankle, my arch drops. When I torque my ankle, when I torque my knee, when I torque my hip, I am creating a natural arch in my foot. So I don't have to walk around squeezing the floor, I just have to stand with torque and a good comfortable foot position. That's gonna keep me in a solid place. Okay, so what is torque through the hip, knee and ankle? It's a rotational force. So you're going to create rotation through the floor. That should turn out your femur, should turn out your knee just a little bit. It's gonna position your tibia bone in a good position as well over the ankle. Everything just moves better when you're in a naturally torqued position. If it's not natural, that's fine, it's just a little weak, we're gonna strengthen that. Awareness is the first step. Okay, when you create torque, when you create this torque, make sure your foot doesn't come off the floor. Your ball of your foot and your big toe needs to stay on the floor when you're creating torque. You don't wanna lose contact with the floor. When you lose contact, I'm not teaching you to you know, walk around on the sides of your feet. You need to maintain a grip through the floor. So maintain contact. Another thing that's really important is not spinning out. When people create torque through their feet, sometimes they, when they're creating torque, they start spinning out. I've seen this, for example, when a person is squatting, 
They start with a small toe flare, that's fine. They create torque, and then as they're squatting, their feet start spinning out. And as you can see here, that's not a good position to train in. This is the ideal torqued position to be squatting in right here. And when we're falling in and caved in, arches down, foot isn't gripping, knees caving in, we're causing a lot of problems through the leg and hip system, which is gonna negatively affect everything above it as well. Okay, so no spinning out, no lifting the foot, grip and torque. All right, some great exercises for improving that postural strength and endurance in the foot is this one exercise I call foot, ankle, knee torque outs. You're gonna put this band just underneath your knees and you're gonna put another band just around the arches of your feet. And I want you to set up with your second toe straight forward and your feet maybe just underneath each shoulder, just outside hip width. And from here, you're gonna create that grip through the floor, through the heel, through the ball of the foot, through the big toe and the outside parameter of the foot. And what I'm gonna have you do with a braced core, you know, we wanna bring that bracing position that we've been training to this exercise. We wanna fall in on purpose and then torque out. Fall in, torque out. Fall in, torque out. Right now my hands are just monitoring, are my abs engaged? Is my neck packed? That's what I'm watching here. I wanna maintain this structure while I'm performing this move. I'm performing this move in a quarter squat. So if I were to stand up and do this, it's not effective, it's not as easy. Get into a quarter squat here. Abs firm, neck packed, monitor your ribs or your glutes, and then go ahead and fall in and then torque out. Foot doesn't spin out, bottom of the foot stays in contact with the floor, especially the ball of the foot and the big toe. That's actually a really important cue while you're doing this exercise. Push down through the ball of the foot and the big toe while you're falling in and while you're torquing out. When you torque out, we can't have any lift off. We've got to push down through the ball of the foot and the big toe. So that's a great exercise for developing and understanding torque through a grounded foot system. And that's going to carry over huge positive changes into any squat you're doing, any lunge you're doing, any deadlift you're doing. If you can organize the foot like this, I guarantee the way you squat is going to be better. The way you hip hinge, the way you bend at the knee, everything's gonna be better. Now another great exercise to develop postural strength and endurance in the bottom of the feet is to work on balance through the feet. So I call this a inline foot kettlebell pass. We're getting the feet in line. They're not staggered, this is staggered, this is in line. So get your feet in line Set up with your feet about one inch apart with a, again, a quarter squat. Knees are soft and you're gonna be tipping forward just a little bit to manage that position. And also some people by accident, they just go revert back to falling in. So we need to torque through the hip, knee and ankle, grip through the floor, create that drive out with the legs. Now we're in the ready starting position. So in this posture, we need to maintain our balance without falling around and we're passing the kettlebell back and forth. And just a quick reminder, we're doing this around a braced core. So the abs are engaged, the obliques are engaged, the neck is packed, the chin is tucked, the shoulders are back and slightly up. They're not drooped forward, they're back and slightly up. And we're passing the kettlebell back and forth. Now, if you're doing this move with too much weight, what will happen is you won't be able to maintain your balance. And what will happen is you'll fall out of the posture. Funny thing about balance is what you do is exactly what you get. So if you are falling out of balance, you will strengthen falling out of balance. If you practice this move with the appropriate weight, you will not fall out of balance. So if a kettlebell is too much, this is a 20 pound kettlebell, if that's too much and there's no kettlebell lighter than that in your gym, grab a dumbbell, they can be 15, 12 and a half, 10, seven and a half, five pounds. This is a five pounder. Build your stance, get organized, and then pass the weight, the appropriate weight, so that you're not losing your balance. Be in balance to train balance and stability. That's one of the catches to training balance. If you're flopping all over the place, you'll continue to flop all over the place, no matter how long you train the move. So get the appropriate weight for this action. There's one more great drill that I like to do 
when training postural strength and foot mechanics. It's a single leg stance. And usually when you're new to this move, I'll get you holding a dowel, this is a dowel, to help yourself balance. If you don't have a dowel, use a chair, use a wall. I like a dowel because I can position it where I want. So I'm gonna grip the floor with the heel, the ball, the foot, the big toe, the outside parameter. I'm going to make sure my brace is solid through my glutes, abs, neck, and shoulders. And then I'm gonna pick up my foot. Now we can't have the arch of the foot falling in. We can't have the knee twisting in. We need to maintain torque, and we need to maintain good foot mechanics and foot posture while the core and the neck and the shoulders are organized over that stance. And this translates huge into jumping mechanics, running mechanics, walking mechanics, lunging mechanics, squatting and deadlift mechanics. You gotta have strong, healthy feet in order to move properly and keep everything above your feet safe and strong. So bring this awareness, bring this foot posture awareness to everything you do, especially when you're wearing shoes. Shoes have a tendency to make our feet lazy, everything falls in. So especially when you're wearing shoes, make sure your feet are in a strong, solid position, a strong, solid posture. So like I mentioned, you're at Starbucks, your feet are in a good position. You're in the shower, shampooing your hair, things aren't falling in, you're organized, everything's in a good place. When you're training with me, when you're training with whoever, with your training with your friends, whatever, you're at a box gym doing whatever, drop into a class. Just because you're not with me doesn't mean your feet can get away with anything. So lock in those feet, get good posture, carry that forward into everything you do. Okay, that's a lot of information. Feet are very important though. Lock in that quality posture, build endurance and strength there, and it will become more and more natural over time. You won't have to think about it as much. You'll be able to set up in your squat, engage, and forget about it because it's gonna stay on. That's what happens when you train these exercises. Things stay on. If you do it long enough, it becomes second nature. Okay, there you go. Good luck with the foot posture and foot mechanics. Good luck and have fun.